Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, I am certainly happy to be speaking with you. This particular um, video is in reference to prayer and spiritual warfare. Now, some of the reasons, the, I want to just talk about some of the reasons why it is so important that we uh, take the initiative to really pray and intercede not only for ourselves and family members, but on the behalf of our nation. Um, we are living in the last days. So it be behooves us, beloved, that we take prayer very serious. Because the enemy, the scripture says, the enemy walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we have to be on top of it. We have to be actively praying and not becoming complacent, uh, becoming uh, full of apathy, but we have to be on top of this because the devil is always walking around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. So let's be um, proactive in this matter of prayer. I want to read to you the chapter, um, I want to read to you from the book of Ephesians, um, this starts at verse uh, 13. Let's see. I want to start at verse 11. It says, put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer, for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you, to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protected armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert. Then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers and pray also that God's revelation will be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel. So in the book of Ephesians, the word of the Lord give us everything that we need. He talks about, first of all, Paul talks about the girl of truth. We need the girl of truth wrapped around us because it is the truth, the word of God that will sustain us in these evil days because there's all kinds of untruths out there, all kinds of false religions, all kinds of error, all kinds of false prophets, false teachers, false preachers. So we need the word of God, which is the truth, the word of God that should be in our hearts. And so when the enemy presents a lie to us, we will know the truth, the real truth which is the word of God. If the enemy said God doesn't love you, we will know without a doubt that is a lie because God said we are loved, we are accepted and the beloved. So we need to practice putting on truth. So the next thing that we need to put on is the breastplate of righteousness. The, breast, the breastplate was a piece of armor that protected the soldier's heart and other vital organs. So today's equivalent would be the bulletproof vest. It was fastened to the girdle 
or belt so it was held securely in place. Just as the ancient soldier knew it was critical for these two pieces of armor to be joined, it is important for us to remember that truth and righteousness always go together. Righteousness simply means right action, uprightness, right standing with God in conformity with the will of God. So watch over your heart, believers, beloved. Watch over your heart with all dil diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. This comes from the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23. So Satan always uh, trying to influence or get us to compromise the principles and the ways of God. So that's why it is important that we equip ourselves with truth. We equip ourselves with righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So the enemy knows that if we compromise the truth and accept his lies, he will gain a foothold in our lives. So we don't want Satan to gain a foothold in our lives with false teaching, false doctrine. So many people get involved in new age so many people get involved with false uh, religions so if in, involved in occulted uh, organizations or uh, sometimes people are involved in cults and they don't even realize they're in a cult because they don't have the truth of God in their heart so beloved get on get filled with the truth the word of God Know the word of God. Get acquainted with the word of God and walk in it. Practice it. So the next piece of armor that we want to equip ourselves is the gospel shoes of peace. So putting on one's shoes is a symbol of readiness. So in Paul's day, shoes were not worn indoors and still are not in many Eastern cultures. So to put, your, put on your shoes indicated you were going outside the protection of the house. God told his people to eat the Passover with their shoes on so that they would be ready to flee Egypt. The soldier's shoes protected his feet and usually were fitted with metal cleats to make him more sure-footed in combat. So we need to be uh, equipped with the shoes of peace, the peace of God. And so um, let's put on this armor of peace. So the next piece of armor that we want to put on is the shield of faith. So we definitely have to be equipped with the shield of faith. It's important that we have our faith uh, really secured in the Lord. And just as I testified before, because I wavered in my faith, the enemy was able to, to sneak in some lies in my heart. But when we equip ourselves and, and, and be aware that the enemy can bring in uh, thoughts that's of himself, we will not allow it. So we keep our shield of faith on to uh, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. So the next piece of armor we want to put on is the helmet of salvation. The helmet, you know, it is used if uh, if you ride a motorcycle or a bicycle, you're always advised to use a helmet. Why are we advised to use a helmet? To protect our head. And so it's the same thing. In the word of God, uh, it says uh, we must put on the helmet of salvation. So salvation protects the uh, Christian against attacks on the mind, one of Satan's primary targets. To, uh, so to deal with such an attack, we must learn to distinguish the voice of our enemy from God's voice. And uh, making sure we're not receiving the lies of the enemy that he speaks to our thought lives or the lies of the enemy that may be coming from someone in your your circle. So we must receive uh, salvation as a part of our warfare. The enemy speaks words of fear, accusation, and condemnation. But when we have the helmet of salvation on, we know that we are secure in Christ Jesus. And that helmet of salvation will just repel the lives of the enemy because our mind, our soul, our spirit has been protected. 
The next piece of armor that we want to put on is the sword of the spirit. And so the sword of the spirit is actually the word of God. Sometimes God gives you a rhema word, a specific word that he wants to speak to your heart. He may give you direction on a specific word. So this is our sword of the spirit that we fight against the enemy. So we talked about uh, putting on the full armor of God. Also in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And so this is, the, this is a very important part of the word of God. God letting us know. That is not people that we're fighting, we should be fighting against. It's not your husband. It's not your wife that you should be fighting against. But we have to come to the realization that there are dark spiritual forces behind people's actions and behaviors oftentimes. So we need to be on guard and be ready to pray, to bind, to resist, to stand fast against the works of the enemy. Now, I remember, I recall going on a trip to Nigeria and to show, uh, to show you, beloved, that you have power and authority uh, to take authority over things that, that should not be. And so as I was there in Nigeria visiting this church with my husband, uh, we were in the church and we were uh, sitting in the church for for a couple of hours before the service even started. And so there was this um, this uh, young man that sat about two benches ahead of me. And so this particular uh, man was really um, jerking. He started acting really strange, jerking his head uh, and doing all kinds of strange movements with his head. And I could tell that it was very, uh, the people that were sitting beside him was getting very annoyed about it. And so and as I sat and I, I, I uh, witnessed this, uh, I saw that it was very disturbing. And so, and the Lord began to speak to my heart and, and show me that this was a religious spirit that was taking control of this man. All these jerking movements that he was doing and so I mentioned it to my husband. And so the Lord began to place on my heart to, to just pray solid, do a solid prayer and to just pray over that young man and bind that spirit. And so I did a solid prayer and you wouldn't believe it as I prayed that solid prayer, took authority over the demon, that religious spirit that wanted him to look ridiculous, that wanted him to look like he was a crazy man. And so as I bind that spirit silently, would you believe the miraculous thing that happened next? That man stopped jerking his head and he sat up and behaved like a normal person and started ha having a conversation with the person next to him. I say, wow, look at the power of God. Even through solemn prayer, God has given us authority to take over the works of the enemy. And so I'm thankful that God demonstrated to me that I can even do a silent prayer and take authority over the works of the enemy in the powerful name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to do spiritual warfare. Don't be afraid because you are sitting in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. You are clothed with righteousness. You have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So use the power, use the authority that God has invested in you. I want you to be blessed 
And I want you to continue to get in the word, equip yourself with the whole armor of God, according to Ephesians chapter six, and be ready in battle. God bless you. Be sure to, to, to uh, subscribe. Be sure to make a comment and share the video and be blessed.